All right, we're on blessing number five out of Psalm 23, which is uh, a famous psalm, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. And there are 12 blessings that are associated with the leadership of the Lord in that psalm. And so we're on the fifth one, and it's in Psalms 23, verse 3. And the verse says, says this, He restoreth my soul, which we dealt with in the last uh, video. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, the first thing to notice in all of that is the fact that Jesus Christ's leadership is righteousness. Now, you and I believe that everything we do, if we don't think it's necessarily right, we have a justification for it. The Bible says this, every man is right in his own eyes, including me, including you. Every man is right in his own eyes. Um, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, the Bible says. It also says there's a way which seemeth right unto men, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So I say that to say <clears throat> it is absolutely necessary for you and I to subject ourselves to the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ because his ways, his leadership is righteousness. Our ways are justified in our mind, but they're not right necessarily. It's not righteousness. Uh, if you can imagine a world where every soul is subject to Jesus Christ and being led by the Lord Jesus Christ, then you would see a world void of wickedness. There would be no wickedness. It would be righteousness, which, by the way, wickedness is the opposite of righteousness. And so if every soul followed the Lord, there would be no wickedness in the world. But we don't. We follow our own paths. We follow what we want to do. We're often just followed or, or led by our, our flesh, our lusts, our, our, our own personal ambitions, things like that. And so we are led astray from the Lord and oftentimes into wickedness because we don't follow the Lord. So the first thing to note is the Lord, his leadership is righteousness. His leadership is righteousness. Now he mentioned in that verse, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read these to you in the book of Proverbs. It's a great book that in in several places, just gives you a, a, a contrast of wickedness and righteousness. And I, I've got more here than you'll, you'll want to hear, but I, I'm going to read just several of these Proverbs to you that contrast wickedness and righteousness. Remember, the Lord's way is righteousness, and he leads in the paths of righteousness. So these are the paths of righteousness. Uh, here, here's a few. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, but f the fruit of the wicked to sin. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Sounds like, sounds like everlasting life. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. And when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, all of these things that are described here will, will be fulfilled. And, he, and the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. 
you may you may have heard of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Maybe that's how you 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 know of him. He's just on a cross. But he's not on a cross anymore. He was buried and he rose again and he beat death and he ascended into heaven. He poured out his Holy Spirit on men to whosoever would believe and he's returning one day to fulfill righteousness in the earth. Uh, here's, here's a few more. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Uh, the righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Hmm. The righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked in the sinner. Uh, a man shall not be established by, righteous, uh, by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Um, the light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Uh, let's see. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Righteous hath hope in his death. Not that the righteous don't die, but the righteous have hope in death. Why? Because we trust in Jesus Christ, the Lord, who beat death. So, I, I, there's, I have a whole page of these just taken from the book of Proverbs that deal with the paths of righteousness. And uh, th there, uh, there's more than you want to hear, I know, but uh, uh, it, it's just, it, it is just descriptive of all of the things, all of the leadership of the Lord in a person's life. Ultimately, ultimately fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the righteousness of God he is absolutely the righteousness of God. In fact, in the Old Testament, and this is kind of point three, I guess, is Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the righteous. He's the, he's the righteousness of God. In fact, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. Paul, Paul would say it this way in, in the New Testament, in the book of Romans. He would describe the condition of man. He said, sin entered into the world by Adam. And because of sin entering the world, death came to all men. Death, death is something you can't beat. You, you, you will not be able to beat death. However, Jesus Christ, the righteous, did beat death. So here's what he says. For if by one man's offense... Death reigned by one. Death comes in, sin comes in through Adam. Adam passes that bloodline down to all of his all of his generations. You and I are Adam's children. We die. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. All right, we're back. I had to take a phone call there. So we're talking about the righteousness, Jesus Christ the righteous. And we're in Romans chapter 5 and verse 21. He says that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. We'll give you, give you another thought here and wrap this video up with this 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 thought paul said i do not frustrate the grace of god for if righteousness come by the law then christ is dead in vain what that means is this if there is a way that you could be so good that God would give you eternal life, let you come to heaven, that, that he, he would just weigh your good works out, then there's no reason Jesus Christ should be dying on the cross. There's, there's no reason for him to die. But the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross means there's no other way. There's no other way to... to 
pay for sin and to offer eternal life to a soul. So if I were to ask you right now, if you were to die right now, let's say you got the coronavirus and you ended up dying from it, where would you go? What, what would happen to you? What, where does your soul go? Is your soul right with God? Is your soul righteous? Does it have a place in heaven? Does it have a place with the Lord? And if your answer is, well, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I, I think I would, I would be all right. I think God would just see that I'm a pretty good person. I do things for the community and, you know, I help out and I raise my kids and all that kind of stuff. You understand that that's great. That's fine. But the sin in your life, that's the problem. The sin that you don't want to talk about. The sin that you've committed against God that maybe, maybe you, you're even unaware of. That sin has to be paid for. And if, if you think that good works pay for sin, you know, your, your answer is, I'm going to let my good works outweigh my bad works. Good works don't pay for sin. They, 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 if they did, if that was the answer to the question, well, I'm going to let my good works, I'm a good person, then Jesus Christ is dead in vain. He died on the cross for no reason. But you know that's not true. You know Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross for no reason. You know he died for your sin. Not only did he die, he rose from the dead and he beat death. Why? Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the righteousness of God. And when David said, he leadeth me in the ways and the paths of righteousness, that's one of the characteristics of God Almighty is righteousness. Righteousness. Righteousness.